One day I bought a small farm for myself and I got some cattle and uh, I got a great buy on the farm because it was all overgrown, it had been let go. Uh, all the weeds, all the weeds on my farm were shoulder high, some of them were 10 feet high. But I got a great buy because I wasn't sure what I bought. <laughs> so I called my dad and I said, I, I need to borrow your brush hog and get out here and, and clean this up, see what I own. And I like brush hogs. How many of you ever had a brush hog time? Yeah, I mean, they're just fun. Uh, nothing's pretty, but it's all down, okay? And you go over it, and man, if the tractor can bend it over, it'll chop it up for you. Well, I'm out mowing along, and everything's going good, and I made a discovery that I bought something on my farm I did not know was there. Now, I found a lot of things. Uh, somebody had thrown away dozens of old baby buggies. You ought to hear what they sound like going through a brush hog. <laughs> it's great. And then somebody threw away some old engine blocks. You ought to hear what they sound like going through a brush shop. Pow. But I'm mowing along, and I went over a hole, not very big, but that big around. And in that hole was an animal I had no idea existed on planet Earth. They're called ground bees. They're a cousin of a wasp. And when I went over that hole, those ground bees, like an oil gusher, came flying up out of that hole. They came after that tractor, and they came after that brush hog like you couldn't imagine. They're trying to sting it. Some of them went into the tires and stuck so hard they got stuck on the tires of the tractor. But while they were nailing the tractor and while they were nailing the brush hog, you could hear them talking. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, they did. They said, get the fat boy on the tractor. <laughs> That's what they said. They went up my pant legs. They went down the back of my T-shirt. They went up under my ball cap. I got bit everywhere. Those stingers are unreal. I come flying off that tractor, swatting myself. I didn't even get the thing out of gear. <laughs> it just ran off and went and hit a tree and stopped over there. Man, I went and jumped under. There's a pond, probably a distance from here to that wall. Man, I jumped in that pond, and I'm looking up. You can see them hitting the water. <sighs> Finally, they went away. I come out of that pond, and I had one mission in life get even with the ground bees. <laughs> I know vengeance belongs to the Lord, but on occasion he just has to understand. That's all. I mean, it just... I told my wife, she said, you're so lucky you didn't get killed. I said, I'm telling you, I'm going to get even. She said, don't you think we should call some people out here who know what they're doing? How many of you men understand the inherent insult in that comment, right? <laughs> now, if you're in the country and you want to do something, there is a resident place of knowledge called the feed store. And in the country, you go to the feed store, and there are always guys sitting in the feed store who can answer just about everything. Man, I am all bit to pieces. I come walking in the feed store. They got a pot belly stove there, and there's three guys sitting there, and when they looked up, it was amazing. First guy looked at me, and he said, ground bees. <laughs> I thought the man's a prophet. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Second guy looked at me, and he said, bet that hurt. And third guy said, bet you want to know how to get even. <laughs> I mean, it was ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. I hadn't even opened my mouth yet. I said, yeah, you bet. I want to know how to get even. I said, okay, here's what you do. Make sure you wait till tonight. Because they said at dusk, like ribbons in the sky, 
they'll all come back and go down the hole. You get them all in the hole. You don't wait till it's dark, they'll nail you again. And you don't want that, do you, fat boy? I said, no. <laughs> fat boy don't want that. No, no, no. They said, once they're all down the hole, you pour gas down the hole. And once you've poured gas down the hole, then you light a match, and you will feel much better. <laughs> I said, I got it. Wait till dark, gas down the hole, light a match. They said, that's it. Man, I went home, I told my wife, this is going to be good. <laughs> sure enough, I waited. And at dusk, it was amazing. Like ribbons in the sky, black ribbons. I have no idea how many ground bees were in that hole, but thousands and thousands of them. And they would come and go whew, right down the hole. Finally, it's all dark. I got my son Matthew, who's a pastor today, with me. He was a young man, and we went out and we're listening. And man, you can hear him down there. I think they're still gurgling on the fat boy stuff. <laughs> So point one's done, dark, they're in the hole. Point number two, I need gas. Walked over, got a five gallon can with me, poured five gallons down the hole. Hey, there's a lot of bees. But I'm not done. I can still hear them. So I pour a second five-gallon can. They never said how much gas to pour down the hole. I told Matt, I said, there's a bunch. Go get the other two five-gallon cans. When it was done, I had 20 gallons of gas down the hole. I said, okay, Matt, I'm ready to feel good. <laughs> what happened next was like unbelievable. I took the match and I went, and I never got to toss it. I mean, I went, <laughs> I burned a perfect circle. All those vapors had come up out of that hole and spread out in a circle. That circle had to be probably 75 or more feet in diameter. It melted the soles on my shoes. It took my eyebrows off. <laughs> Flames went up so high in the air that we got a call from the local police that an airliner had spotted an explosion. <laughs> my wife, who was watching from the house, came running out. And she said, where's Matthew? You killed Matthew. <laughs> I'm looking around, no Matt. He had run and jumped in the pond. <laughs> <laughs> Next morning, I went back to the feed store. <laughs> All three of them are sitting there. First one said, too much gas. <laughs> Second one said, bet that hurt. <laughs> and third one said, bet you're up here to find out how to do it next time. <laughs> I said, guys, I got one question. How many times have you ever done it? You know what they said in unison? 
We've never done it. We just tell other people how to do it. And the one guy said, fools like you walk in here all day long. <laughs>